Welcome back to the Shrekecast. My name is Andrew Krauthemmel, and today's going to be a short video. I am packing to go away for the week, uh, so next Wednesday there will not be a video, but after that they will continue as normal. Um, today we're going to do a short video on how to set your time correctly. So this is something I went over in my best practices video, but I wanted to reiterate uh, because it's come up quite a bit recently uh, in my own experiences, so I figured I would uh, reiterate the point and make a separate video on this. Uh, a lot of people do not spend the time to set the time correctly on their devices. Uh, unlike a computer that we have to interact with every day, uh, a lot of admins i found do not set the time properly on their network devices or other intermediary devices within their infrastructure if it doesn't rely on time to work on a daily basis. Uh, this can cause problems when you try and do updates for your licensing, it, uh, you can do updates for your security services, updates for all different things that connect to the internet to SonicWall, as well as for your logs. Uh, if you try to mail things to your syslog server or email them to your email address uh, on a you know digest basis, uh, if your time doesn't match up to what you'd expect, then you can have skewed results as to when you things might be uh, when you think things might be happening on your network. So here's how I go through and uh, set up my my time. We're on a TZ100 here uh, from the Sonical Live demo site, and we're going to go to System Time, and we have a few options here. So the most obvious one here is that uh, we can set the time and date manually if we do not automatically set the time using the network time protocol NTP. So you can override the time if you wish. Uh, what I normally do is since these are sonic walls, they are connecting to the internet, they're going to be your, your gateway a lot of times, your default gateway, that's your main router for your uh, internet access. I leave that checked, which is by default, so that we use an NTP server. Uh, the NTP protocol uh, connects, you can have set to connect to an internal server if you're in like a domain environment or you can have it go out to the internet to get an address, uh, to get the time. I like to set mine to the uh, NTP pool and um, go from there. So as we go down we're going to you know, make sure we check off the right options to use an NTP server. Uh, one of the main things you're going to want to set is your time zones. This is the one thing that people do not, uh, do not select is the proper time zone so then by default they come in as Pacific so if you're in the Eastern uh, or you're over in another country uh, you need to set your time zone correctly so I'm gonna go in select Eastern since I'm on the East Coast uh, if you're not using your local time you can tell it to use UTC um, Greenwich Mean Time essentially f instead of your local time uh, and then we're gonna leave that second option I glanced over there uh, because that also goes hand in hand with the top option so that everything automatically adjusts through the NTP protocol. Uh, I don't need an international format, I'm in the US so uh, I'll use my normal US formatting and I can have it use only custom NTP servers. So what I'm going to do is normally uh, there's an internal list of NTP servers that's used by default. What I like to do is say use custom NTP servers and then I override the internal list with the NTP pool from ntp.org. So what we'll do is add an NTP pool. Uh, if you go to ntp.org, which uh, actually I'll, I'll do that. This is the main website for the publicly available NTP servers, which are run by uh, educational institutions, large ISPs, um, other benefactors, and there's a multi-tiered system of time servers that you can access. Uh, only a few years ago there, there didn't used to be a pool that you could access. You'd have to find out which tier you wanted to use. Usually it would be a tier 2 server or tier 3. And then you sometimes would have to contact the provider of, of that NTP server and say, hey, I would like to use your server. Is that okay? You find out what address they have, find ones that are local to you, local colleges and whatnot that be, would, would be in a big list, and then you'd add that in as, as your NTP servers. Now you can just go to a pool, and uh, that will load balance and handle uh, the different servers that you want to access. So what we'll do is we'll go to pool, 
ntp.org and we're going to browse their list here so this is the main page for ntp.org uh, for the pool project so what you can do if you're looking at this page here is you can add in to your NTP pool uh, your NTP server address simply pool.ntp.org uh, or you can have a 0, 1, 2, 3 in front of that as well as ones based on your zones so you can have a North America.pool.ntp.org, there's a US.pool.ntp.org and so on so what I did was I just clicked on North America there and then I can click on United States and here we can see there's the address that I can use for my area so I just narrowed it down from a pool of thousands of servers internationally down to uh, looks like underneath 600 servers for IPv4 uh, only in North America so in, in the United States so since I'm in the East Coast of the United States it makes more sense to access servers that are locally closer to me uh, to reduce issues that you might have with jitter and lag and, and uh, latency issues across the internet. So local things that are uh, closer and more local to you are better. Uh, so I like to specify this. So what I'll do is select us.pool.ntp.org and I'll go back to my little pop-up window and I'm going to put that in. That will be my NTP server. So us.pool.ntp.org actually goes to hundreds of servers that are classified as United States NTP pool servers. So it's a really nice system. I really enjoy this pool project. It's been a real time saver. I'll go back to my pop-up. If they have an authentication system required, you can do that. Um, if you're using the pool, you don't need the authentication uh, setup. So you can just go ahead and click OK. And then your NTP server will show up there where it says no entries and then just go ahead and click accept and you're now using a custom NTP server and not only one but you're using hundreds within your country or within your continent uh, and I, I like doing it this way so then they'll, your, your sonic wall will receive its time through the NTP protocol over the internet using UTC as its base time and then it modifies that time based on your time zone which you've properly configured and then everything looks nicely in your logs everyone's updated your licensing systems and updates and whatnot that have to happen on your sonic wall are all nice and happy now and anything you end up doing for uh, your syslogging or, or you know management applications all the time will match and everything will work a lot nicer for you so that is it for tonight I told you it would be short uh, and if you enjoy your videos check back uh, two weeks from now so not next Wednesday but the Wednesday after I'll continue we might start branching out into more generic topics as well uh, I know I'd uh, there's a few topics I want to go over still in Sonic Walls, but uh, we may uh, start branching out into other general IT or other vendors. We'll uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, if uh, you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe uh, to Shrekcast, uh, so you get the updates every Wednesday. And check out AndrewCrowdHamel.com, which is a network and security blog I run, as well as ShrekTools.com, which is a managed security services provider for small and medium businesses. And I will see you two Wednesdays from now. Thank you.